Hello, good morning, hi, welcome to another reading vlog. This is my first reading vlog of 2023, which is very exciting. We're a week into the year and it's going okay so far. I have read some good books. I'm hoping to read some more good books. Looking forward to filming this video. I've even started making travel plans that I actually intend to do rather than just say I'm going to do. Who is she? So for this vlog, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a themed reading vlog. Waterstones in 2022 announced their prize winners at the end of the year for the author of the year, children's book of the year, and the book of the year. Now the book of the year is the story of art without men. That one I'm not going to be reading for this because I wanted to keep this as a fiction vlog, but the other two I want to read for this video. So the two books in question are Scandal and the Unicorn Thief by A.F. Steedman and also Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. These are two very different books from each other. We have a middle grade fantasy and we have a historical feminist, hopefully a kind of fierce empowerment type of story. Very much looking forward to reading them both. I have started Skandar already. I'm gonna be reading this one first. I'm gonna be listening to this as an audiobook whilst I do a couple of bits around the house this morning. And then I'm gonna be physically reading alongside once I finish the things I need to do. And then Lessons in Chemistry will be my second read for this vlog. So I'm taking part in a 40 hour readathon that I'm hosting this weekend with my Patreons. So I'm hoping that I can get a good chunk of these read. I'm definitely hoping that I can at least finish Skandar and the Unicorn Thief, given that that's the one I have already started with. But I'm not rushing myself with any of this. Like I want to enjoy the books and I wanna give you my full thoughts and opinions on them. So this is just gonna be a little reading vlog slash review for these two books, but let me tell you a little bit about them. So Skandar and the Unicorn Thief. The island is calling. Skandar Smith has only ever wanted to be a unicorn rider, to be one of the lucky few selected to hatch a unicorn, to bond with it for life, to train together and race for glory, to be a hero. But just as Skandar's dream is about to come true, things take a more dangerous turn than he could have ever imagined. A dark and twisted enemy has stolen the island's most powerful unicorn. And as the threat grows ever closer, Skandar discovers a secret that could blow apart his world forever. It says there's elemental magic, sky battles, ancient secrets, and ferocious unicorn in this epic adventure series that will have your heart soaring. Now, I'm so sure I'm gonna like this that I have already pre-ordered the sequel. As much as I'm definitely reading a lot more adult books at the moment, I do love the untapped imagination that comes with middle grade. There's just something so fantastical about it, and I really, really hope that this one is the same for that. I have definitely heard this spoken about in the same conversation as Percy Jackson, and I don't know if that's because the title is similar. You've got Scandar and the Unicorn Thief and Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. I don't know if that's the reason or if there's more to it than that, but either way, I'm excited to find out. So I will let you know my thoughts as I read a little bit more of this one. And then Lessons in Chemistry, which is definitely not something I would have picked up in the past, but I'm really pushing myself to expand my reading taste, and I have heard pretty much solely good things about this one, so I have high hopes. Chemist Elizabeth Sott is not your average woman. In fact, Elizabeth Sott would be the first to point out that there is no such thing. But it's the early 1960s and her all-male team at Hastings Research, Research Institute takes a very unscientific view of equality, except for one, Calvin Evans, the lonely, brilliant, Nobel Prize nominated grudge holder, who falls in love with, of all things, her mind. True chemistry results. But like science, life is unpredictable, which is why a few years later, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Sott finds herself not only a single mother, but the reluctant star of America's most beloved cooking show, Supper at Six. Elizabeth, Elizabeth's unusual approach to cooking, combined one tablespoon acetic acid with a pinch of sodium chloride, proves revolutionary. But as her following grows, not everyone is happy, because as it turns out, Elizabeth Sott isn't just teaching women to cook, she's daring them to change the status quo. That sounds so good, and I don't know why I didn't pick it up when it initially came out. This is the the fear of daunting books that just is silly and isn't really there. Like, I, why should this be daunting to me? It shouldn't. So these are the two books that I'm gonna be reading for this vlog, for Waterstones prize winners. I'm very much looking forward to seeing my thoughts on these. Of course, I will share with you throughout the weekend and continuing beyond the weekend if I don't finish them both over the next two days. So that's the reading vlog. Hopefully you enjoy. Welcome to my first reading vlog back of the year. And I'll give you my thoughts and feelings as I read a bit more of Skandar and the Unicorn Thief. Okay, I have made some progress with Skandar and the Unicorn Thief. I'm about 150 pages into this. And I just wanted to drop by with my initial thoughts because I'm really liking this. So we meet Skandar. He's a young boy that is going to school to take his hatchling test, which is basically where you find out if you can go to this island and potentially hatch a unicorn that you will then be bonded with for life and you will then be a unicorn rider. And he is wanting to go and take this test. Everyone has to take this test, but he really wants to take this test and he wants to be a unicorn rider. Now, what I love about this is the way that unicorn riding is integrated into this world. I think it's so fun. It's just done in such a casual way. Like 
they all have names like horse race, horse racing horses as well, which racing horses would be the right word there, which I think is a really good fun attribute and something in there I feel like for the adults as well. So that aspect I'm really liking. Skandar is a sweet cinnamon bun of a human and I feel like he has a heart of gold and he's going to do good things and I'm excited to see what he does. So far, really liking it. I'm very interested by how the elemental magic is woven in with the unicorn stuff. It's different. I think I would have really liked this as a kid. I feel like my sister would quite enjoy this because she really likes horses. So I'm enjoying it. I feel like it's 4, 4.5 level at the moment, which is really good. And I can definitely see why it was picked for Waterstones 2022 Children's Book of the Year. Okay, I thought this would be really cool lighting, but now I feel like it just looks like I'm in some kind of weird horror film. But anyway, I'm nearly finished with Scandal and the Unicorn Thief. I'm really liking it. The big dramatic moments are happening. I feel like this is definitely going to be a series that just keeps evolving and evolving as I assume it goes through each year of schooling. I, I assume it's going to follow that kind of pattern. I don't know, but I'm looking forward to seeing what it does follow and I'm definitely going to continue with this series. I really like the audiobook as well. The narrator is really good at giving different characterizations to each character using the narration voice style. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm now waiting for sushi to arrive for dinner because I could not be bothered to cook. I have spent all day doing various different things whilst listening to my audiobook and I just feel a bit pooped. So I'm going to pick a film and I'm going to sit and I'm going to chill and it's going to be great. So I hope you're enjoying the vlog so far. I'm definitely enjoying the book. I got sushi. Got my sushi, got a film on. I have no idea what to expect from this, but it looked semi-decent, so I thought I'd give it a go. reading updates I finished Skandar and the Unicorn Thief. This was such a brilliant wholesome yet adventure packed and epic middle grade fantasy. I loved Skandar, I loved his group of friends, I really liked the camaraderie between them and how they all supported each other and how that kind of grew and developed and that trust that they had with each other. I think that was probably my favourite thing about this book. The writing style was incredibly easy flow and just felt very relaxing and calming to read whilst also being about something very dramatic and epic. It just felt like it was such a delightful reading experience and I really enjoyed this. I can absolutely see why Waterstones picked this as their children's book of the year. It's completely deserving of that title. I wish I would have had this when I was at school. I would have adored this. I mean, I can adore it now as an adult, absolutely. But I know that young Beth would have absolutely loved this. And now adult Beth could love it instead. I think ordering the sequel is a good shout because I'm definitely going to want to read more from these characters. I don't know how many books are going to be in this series, but if you are thinking about reading this, if you have this on your shelves, it's definitely worth the hype. It's brilliant. And I think it works really well for adults as well. I think it feels... The characters, they, they're 13, they come across very mature with their decision making, they're really going through like these big journeys and these big development and changes and I feel like I assume the rest of the series is going to show more of that side of things and I assume it'll go year by year of their schooling experience. I don't know, I hope it does that. But I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really liked it and this was a great way to start the vlog. That means I am now going to start lessons in chemistry. I am currently on Patreon Live. It is 4.30, so I'm quite late into starting this one. It's currently Sunday, so I am day two into this reading vlog. I'm not going to force myself to try and read loads of this and finish this by today. The point of me setting my Goodreads goal this year as one book was so that I just lifted the pressure and I'm changing up the kind of content I do a little bit as well so that when I do do videos like this I can spend more time reading the books and creating special themed vlogs where I don't feel like I'm too rushed. Obviously sometimes I like setting a challenge where I put myself like a challenge to read X amount of books in one week. That's fun, I enjoy that sometimes, but taking a relaxed approach. So I'm excited to see how I find this book. 
I'm gonna go start it now on sprints. I have tidied away all of my miniature making. I don't know if I've said in this vlog, but I have been making, hold on, let me show you. I've been making this, this little DIY miniature house whilst I've been listening to the audiobook. And I am about halfway through the build on this. Probably less than that, to be honest. It's about to get very fiddly, I think. So yeah, this is what I've been doing whilst I've been listening to the audiobook for Skandar. So I've just hyped all of that away. And now I'm gonna go start my next read. Okay, I need to talk to you about this book. I'm 30 or 40 pages in, so I'm really not far in at all. And my God, I am so mad. And I don't mean that in a bad way. The writing of this book is so smooth and it flows so well that I have already become to care so much about this character that I am very invested in her future and in her progress and in her story. And the injustices she is facing and the sexism and the discrimination are making me so mad so mad. I want good things for her and I want her to be safe and happy and successful and I'm just really mad at anyone that's stepping in her way there and the way that people are treating her. And I know that's only gonna progress but the author has definitely already set the tone for what we're gonna be talking about in this book. The author has done a fantastic job of doing that and the writing as I've already said is very smooth and just absolutely brilliant and it reads so nicely and just for something that is dealing with a really heavy topic essentially it's done in a very delicate way i would definitely say to check out the trigger warnings if you feel like you would need to for this book it's fantastic already i can see why it's a prize winner it's it's great it's also making me very hungry very hungry so i'm gonna go cook dinner now <laughs> I have some reading updates and I have a little bit of a book haul. So I was out with my friend today, Immy from Mythic Reader, who has a fantastic Instagram account, one of my favourite accounts. I'm not just saying that because she's my friend. I will leave her link down below. Please, please, please go and check Immy's Instagram account out. It deserves all the love. She's a fantastic, fantastic photographer and just reads some great books with some really good recommendations. Anyway, <laughs> I was out with my friend Immy today and I bought a book and Immy gave me two books and I had also bought two books from her Vinted which I will also leave down below because she is selling a load of secondhand books at the moment and there are some really really good ones there. So I picked up two books 
from her vintage and she gave them to me today. So I have a little bit of a book haul. I also, as I said, have a reading update. So I'll start with the reading update. Lessons in chemistry, more like lessons in sadness. I did not realise this book would be so heartbreaking. I really didn't. It made me cry last night. I just feel so sad for the main character. There is so much that she is experiencing and there is such an isolated feeling about what she is going through. And it's just so bloody sad. Nobody told me it was gonna be this sad. I've been told it doesn't remain sad the whole time. I mean, it's brilliant, don't get me wrong, it's fantastic. It's just breaking my heart. Also, there is a dog in this. And I swear to God, if anything happens to the dog, I will riot. I love the dog very, very much. We kind of get a little bit of a narrative from the dog at times, which is very sweet and very wholesome, the way that the dog sees the world. But yeah, this book has already broken me. So thank you, Bonnie Garmus, for that. I'm definitely liking it a lot. I just, I'm only 130 pages in. It's broken me after 130 pages. Speaking of books that are gonna break me, I thought I'd give the sequel to The Bridges of Madison County a go. The Bridges of Madison County is one of my favorite books of all time and I reread it this year for the first time since 2015. In 2015, it destroyed me. In 2023, it destroyed me. It is a fleeting romance between a woman who is in an unhappy marriage and a National Geographic photographer and it is their affair that doesn't last very long at all, but at the same time lasts a lifetime. And this book is the sequel, and the first book destroyed me, so this book's probably gonna do the same. It's it's the conclusion, so there's only two books in this in this series, but yeah, I'm 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 not really ready. This follows the National Geogra National Geographic photographer out of out of the pairing, who I really enjoyed reading about because I just felt like the passion for photography was so clear in that book. So yeah, I bought I bought this one for myself and I'm no doubt probably going to continue to torture myself with that book. Also in Waterstones today I picked up Diary of a Tuscan Bookshop. This is by Alba Donati and this is translated by Elena Parler. This is a non-fiction that follows Alba who decides that she is leaving behind her life. She's living a very hectic life working in publishing. She's a book publicist and everything's very hectic. She's living in Florence and she decides to return to the small village in the Tuscan hills where she was born and open a tiny bookshop. It says that this is an enterprise that was doomed or seemed doomed from day one, but it surprisingly sparked the enthusiasm of many across Tuscany and beyond. It's inspiring and deeply moving and it is both an ode to the power of reading and a celebration of booksellers everywhere, the true heroes of the tree world. Not only does this look beautiful, but it also sounds like a stunning journey and to know that this all actually happened, I just, I thought this sounded great and I want to read more nonfiction, so this is a great place to start. As I said, Immy gave me two books and I bought two books from Immy's Vintage. So the two that I bought are These Violent Delights by Mika Nemereva, Nemereva, and I also bought Portrait of an Unknown Lady by Maria Gainza, Ganza. Need to check on pronunciations of those, but I've heard a lot about these violent delights. I know that it's a dark academia. I know that Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction really enjoyed it. It's also got deckled edges. I haven't seen deckled edges on a book for ages, so I'm excited about this one. I don't know too much about this one, but the cover initially appealed to me, and I think it's about art, which makes me very happy. It's a dazzling story of art and illusion, secrets and schemes, who is to be trusted and what is real. This is also translated. This is translated from Spanish by Thomas Bunstead. I'm not giving huge descriptions of these because I want to go and make dinner, but Immy also gave me two arcs. Obviously, I didn't buy these two, but Immy just gifted these over to me. So this is Collabound, The Collabound by Rebecca Zabi, which looks like a fantasy. The cover is definitely giving me fantasy vibes. And also A Good House for Children by Kate Collins, which is a gothic, I think. Very excited about this one. I love me a gothic. So yeah, I got these two as well. So a little book haul. Cool. Some reading thoughts. Sorry, my doorbell buzzed. I was about to say, I'm gonna go watch the menu now, which I've heard very, very good things about. So I'm gonna make some dinner and then watch that. It has been a hot minute since I've spoken to you about this book. I went back to my family for the weekend and I don't think I've given you an update since maybe Wednesday last week. So it's currently Tuesday, so we're nearly a week later. So I'm reading this for just over a week and I definitely have some thoughts and feelings. I have under 100 pages left, so I'm hoping to finish this tonight. I'm gonna be on Patreon reading sprints later this evening. So I'm hoping that I can read those last few pages tonight. I mean, it definitely should be doable, but I have thoughts and feelings. So I am so torn with this book. To start with, this is brilliant. This is brilliantly written. Bonnie Garmus is an incredibly talented author. The characters are so fantastic. Seeing Elizabeth and what she goes through and the development in her character, she's got such good character development whilst also never sacrificing who she is and always maintaining 
that part of herself throughout this whole story but she just kind of changes and grows and develops with the experiences she goes through in this book and it's just so brilliantly done following Madeline and following Harriet and 630 are just such delightful characters to read about and to see insights from them contributing to Elizabeth Sott's story is really brilliant and I think that Bonnie Garmus has done a fantastic job of that. She's also done a fantastic job of creating Elizabeth to represent so many women's experiences of being mistreated and misunderstood and treated differently just because they are women and I think that reading through Elizabeth's eyes and through how Elizabeth is not taking any shit essentially and she is fighting for what she deserves and seeing that is incredibly empowering to read about Elizabeth doing that and to read about everything that tries to stop Elizabeth getting to where she wants to get and how she just keeps on going forward and I love that, I think that is done exceptionally well. Now where my torn feelings come about is that whilst I think this is brilliantly written I don't know how much I'm actually enjoying reading it. <laughs> I think I, I am I am enjoying it and I am definitely enjoying it because the writing is so good and it's because the writing is so good that I also don't know if I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Create a paradox here. Basically this is evoking such strong emotions in me. I felt incredibly sad at the start, I didn't expect it to be that sad and now I'm just really mad and really pissed off and I think that's a sign of exceptional writing of course that I'm feeling this but I don't know how enjoyable it means I'm actually finding the experience of reading it because it's making me so mad. It's definitely giving me an experience and it's definitely going to be a book I remember and I can see why it's won these awards. But in a weird way I just I just don't know how much I'm actually liking sitting down to pick it up and I think that's why it's taking me longer to read because I need to be in the mental space to know I'm gonna feel really mad and I always feel really mad about seeing these kind of things and obviously this is set in the 60s, it is based on the way things were and that in itself is infuriating but also now we are seeing things different for sure but there's still so many things in which women are treated differently and I hate that and it makes me mad about that as well. So I'm, I'm confusing myself basically. Yes I like it, no I'm not loving sitting down to read it because it makes me mad but that's a great sign of the writing being fantastic so therefore I am enjoying it for that reason. <laughs> This is a great summary. I was just thinking about it yesterday because I basically, I'm planning on doing some more travel this year and I want to feel like I can do more solo travel and the big thing stopping me at the moment is just my safety and obviously if you're traveling with someone there are still risks for sure but you are with somebody and you have that safety net. There's two of you or more, more than two of you. So I was looking for personal alarms online and there was a couple on Amazon that were on the cheaper range and you got quite a few in one order and then there was this website that was dedicated to creating personal alarms and I went with that one which was more expensive but I felt like it looked like a sturdier thing. The ones on Amazon looked like you could just pull the pin out and it would make a really loud noise by accident and it would be in the bottom of your bag or something whereas these ones looked a bit more intentional. So anyway I ordered this one and the whole website was just completely marketed for women, of course, it, like that that was the kind of purpose that these arm, alarms were targeted towards and on Amazon every single alarm was like alarms for women, alarms for women, alarms for women and it just, it, it really, I was looking at it like for god's sake because I know obviously yes I am a woman looking for alarm because I feel unsafe as a woman yes that is correct they're marketing that towards me and I'm not I'm not shitting on the fact they've marketed towards women. The point of this whole story ramble is that this book obviously being set in the 60s things are very different things have changed a lot however there are still a lot of things that haven't and there is a lot of talk in this book about how Elizabeth protects herself in many different ways and now in 2023 I am still thinking about the ways to protect myself as a woman and I still feel unsafe because I am a woman and the way that that can be taken advantage of and yeah the contrast there you know that's what's always really crap about these kind of books whenever I read anything about the way that women are treated and about feminism and the rights that women have had and how that's changed it's always different now but not gone and I suppose you can say that for many 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 different things and that's shit. <laughs> so that's yeah that's why I have so many mixed feelings towards this book. It's great, it's making me mad, I'm gonna try and finish it tonight and give you my final thoughts later. On the note of the personal alarm I'm actually gonna leave a link down below in this video talking about this alarm because I have always thought I should get one 
and I never actually did and now I'm going to be traveling alone a bit I wanted to make sure I definitely have one because whilst I know it's not necessarily gonna be a solution if I'm in a situation where I need to use it it's certainly going to be something I can help myself with and something that I can feel a lot safer for having so I'm going to put a link down below they are pricier than the Amazon ones however I feel like it's worth being a little bit more expensive because of what it is and what it can offer you so there is a link down below anybody can have these anyone if you don't feel safe I mean I've talked about how it's marketed towards women but I feel like literally it, it doesn't matter if you are not feeling safe if you have to walk down an alleyway to get home at night or something there this has turned into not an ad but uh, a chat about personal alarms now anyway <laughs> I'm gonna crack on with my day and I will let you know my final thoughts later just a real quick side add on to what I've just been speaking about. I feel like I went on a bit of a tangent there talking about the alarms and things, but I just, I wanted to keep that in the vlog because I I feel like it's an important thing to talk about and something that I always knew about but never really looked into very much. So that's kind of why I kept in that ramble <laughs> about the different types of alarms. But I kind of went off too much and forgot to kind of come back to one of the points I wanted to talk about as well. And that is the fact that the conversation is very much always around the way that the women are treated and how the women can stop themselves being treated in this way and how they can try and evoke the change and how they can try and change the mindsets. And I think that it's translated into the kind of conversation of why is it in society that we're telling women to protect themselves and telling women that they shouldn't walk home alone or that they, you know, should carry these alarms on them versus telling the men not to attack the women or telling the men not to treat the women in certain ways or be prejudiced and discriminate against them for those reasons. And that's kind of one of the things that I was getting at here as well in that this book is discussing what Elizabeth is trying to do to evoke this change and she just sees it as normal that she should be able to do all these things, which it absolutely is. And the question is never what are the men doing to stop acting like this, but it's more how can Elizabeth change things and I just think that that's always been the narrative in some way or another and I hate that and I think this book is very cleverly drawing attention to that a bit more. So yeah, just I just wanted to add that in at the end there. I finished this book and it made me cry. I obviously updated you yesterday talking about how I wasn't really sure how to describe my feelings about this book and honestly having finished it I'm still not sure how to describe my feelings about this book but I gave it five stars. I thought it was fantastic, it was incredibly emotive and gave me all sorts of feelings. What I said yesterday still very much stands. My concluding thoughts are I still don't know if what I would describe my process as reading this book as enjoyable, but I definitely did get a lot from it and it made me feel all the feelings. The last few pages. Ah, <laughs> oh, so this was great. And I can totally see why Waterstones picked it as their author of the year. Bonnie Garmus is fantastic and I want to read more from her. Does she have more? Is this a debut? I need to know if she's got more out because honestly that, I mean, her writing was just phenomenal. Okay, according to Waterstones website, it's all just lessons in chemistry. It, seriously, is that her debut? I mean, it was just so good. So yeah, I kind of, I've said everything I wanted to say yesterday about this and I obviously I'm not going to spoil the ending and tell you what my exact reaction to certain moments was but I was constantly hooked at the end of this and I just felt incredibly invested and I just wanted to see how these characters would end up and what their journey was going to look like because it was definitely a journey with them so it was five stars it was brilliant did I enjoy it I don't know <laughs> but it made me feel things I must I must have enjoyed it I, I did enjoy it. why I'm just having this moral dilemma on camera for you to just pick apart I must have enjoyed it, otherwise I wouldn't be saying how fantastic it was, but like, ugh, why am I so torn? If anyone else got this feeling with this book that you just don't know how to feel about it. So yeah, it made me mad, it made me sad, and it did make me smile at the end. So yes, yes I did enjoy this book, I'm committing to the answer. I enjoyed Lessons in Chemistry and I gave it five out of five stars. I feel like I've been filming this vlog forever, but I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. It is now coming to an end. I am heading out to London today, so I need to wrap this up quick because I need to get going. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what you thought of this book if you've read it or what you're currently reading. You can also subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. I have so many exciting bits of content coming, seriously, like so many things that I have planned. 
and I cannot wait. I feel like I'm just upping everything I'm doing at the moment and I'm so excited for it. So there's lots of things happening. Speaking of, my patrons get sneak peeks to upcoming things, including a very big project I'm working on at the moment. So if you want to join, that is all linked down below. I do sprints weekly, I do a podcast, all sorts of things, a discord. It's a good time. You can also find a link down below to my online shop. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.